Hello. Last week I developed this method for solving Sudoku puzzles of any difficulty level. I've tried it a few times and it seems to work. I think it will even work on puzzles that have been partially solved using a different method. My system treats Sudoku like an information management problem and tries to give you simultaneous access to information about each cell in terms of its box, row, and column. In this video, I will explain the steps of the method and apply it to an easy Sudoku puzzle. In another video, I will apply it to a harder puzzle. Here we go. This is the worksheet that I have created to go with my Sudoku method. As you can see, it has nine boxes with nine cells each, corresponding to the boxes of the Sudoku puzzle. If we zoom in, we can see that each cell has nine small numbers in it, corresponding to the possible numbers for that cell. I'll call this the possibles bar. The larger numbers that we see below each box of nine, at the top of each column, and at the left side of each row, will be used to track the possible numbers in each box, row, and column. Next, I will explain the steps in my method. The first step in this method is to write in all the given numbers in the cells of the worksheet. Step two, cross out all the given numbers in the boxes, then step three in the rows, and then step four in the columns of the worksheet. This will take some time, but it's an important setup for what's coming. Step five, scan every cell in the worksheet looking for cells that have just one number left. We'll call these uniques. When you find a unique box, write the number in the cell, cross out that cell's possible bar, and then cross out that number in the cell's box, in its row, and in its column. It's very important to be thorough and systematic about this. You're, what you're doing is exporting that information from that, the filling of that cell into the other boxes and columns of the worksheet. Step seven. Begin evaluating by boxes. Circle the filled numbers that are in the big box below each box. In each cell, write all the remaining possibles for that cell, small, in the lower left corner. And if you find a cell that has just one possible left, then it is a unique and you should go to step six. If two cells have the same two possibles left in, in a box, circle those pairs and cross out both of those numbers in the other cells of that box. It's very important to follow this step one cell at a time. Don't go chasing down rabbit holes, filling in numbers in other boxes of the worksheet. Step eight. The second way to evaluate boxes is for each uncircled big number beneath the box, look for it in the cells of that box to appear at least twice. If it appears two or more times, then just write a dot under the big number. If it appears only once in the box, circle it and go to step six to fill in that cell. After you place a number, you should begin checking the possibles for the box over again, starting from number one. This is because some of the possibles you've crossed out in filling a cell might implicate other deductions that you can make. Step nine. We do the exact same procedure for the rows, starting on the left side at the top. Circle the big numbers that are filled. For each uncircled big number, look for it to appear at least twice in the row. If it appears twice or more, put a dot under it. If it appears only once in the row, it is a unique and you should go to step six to fill it in. After placing a number, you should begin again checking possibles in the row, again starting over from number one. And the final step, step 10, is to apply the same procedure to evaluating the columns. In the top row, starting with the left side column, circle the big numbers that are filled. For each uncircled big number, look for it to appear at least twice in the column. If it appears two or more times, put a dot under it. If it appears only once in the column, circle it and go to step six to fill in that cell. After placing a number, again, recheck all the possibles in that column starting from one. The rest of the method is simply to repeat steps seven through 10, cycling through checking boxes, checking rows, and checking columns until the puzzle is solved. Here's the method applied to an easy Sudoku puzzle. 
All right, I'm now going to apply my worksheet method to a sample easy Sudoku puzzle. This is one with a difficulty rating of 0.43 that I just generated off of the internet. The first step is to write the given numbers from the puzzle onto the worksheet, so I'll start doing that now. 5 here, 3, 6, 8, 9, and 1 here. Now I'll do the rest. There. Now I've mapped all of the numbers from the uh, puzzle sheet onto the worksheet. My next step is to go box by box and to cross out the given numbers in each box from the empty cells in that box. So I'll start here at the upper left. 5 is filled in the center box. I'm going to cross out its possible bar so I don't get confused by it later. Then I'm going to cross out the small number 5 in every other cell in the box. This indicates that 5 is no longer a possibility for any of those cells. This next box over, 1, 3, 6, 8, and 9 are filled. I'm going to cross out their possible bars. And then I'm going to cross out 1, 3, 6, 8, and 9 from each remaining empty cell. 1, 3, 6, 8, 9. 1, 3, 6, 8, 9. 1, 3, 6, 8, 9. I'll now do the same thing for all the other cells, all the other boxes on the worksheet. All right. Now I've crossed out all of the given numbers in each box. Now I'm going to do the same procedure by rows. So for this very top row, the numbers 3 and 4 are filled. So I'll go through every empty box, every empty cell in the top row, crossing out the numbers 3 and 4. 3, 4, 3, 4, 3, 4, 3, 4. 3 is already crossed out here. 4, 3, 4, 3, 4. The second row. 1, 5, 6, 8, 9, 1, 5, 6, 8, 9, 1, 5, 6, 8, 9, 1, 5, 6, 8, 9, 1, 5, 6, 8, 9. Now I'm going to go through and do this for each of the remaining rows in the puzzle on the worksheet. All right, now I've crossed out all the numbers by box and by row. I'm going to do the same thing by column. In this leftmost column, the numbers 2, 5, 6, and 8 are filled. So for each empty box in that column, I'm going to cross out 2, 5, 6, and 8 if they're not already crossed out. 2, 5 is already done, 6, 8. 2, 5 is already done, so is 6, so is 8. 2, 5, 6, 8. 2, 5, 6, 8 and 2, 5, 6, 8. The second column, 1, 3, 5, 9, 1, 3, 5, 9, 1, 3, 5, 9, 1, 3, 5, 9, 1, 3, 5, 9, 1, 3, 5, 9. I'm now going to do that for the other columns on the worksheet. All right, now I'm finished mapping all the numbers from the puzzle onto the worksheet, and I've crossed out all of the given numbers by box, by row, and by column. Now it's time to make some deductions. The way I'm going to do that is to first scan all the cells, looking for cells that have just one number left. I'll do that now. In this first box, I don't see any with just a single number left. In the second box, I do have one here. This 7 is the only number remaining in this cell. That tells me that the 7 must be placed here. When I find a number, I'm going to, uh, this is called a unique, I'm going to first write the number big in the cell, cross out its possible bar, then I need to cross out that number first in every other empty cell in the box. So I cross out the 7 here and here and here, since it cannot occur anywhere else in that box. 
I also cross it out in the column, so I cross it out down here, and I notice as I do that 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 makes this 4 the last number remaining in this cell. It's a unique also. I'm going to circle it so I can come back to it later and place it. And then I also cross out the 7s in the row. 7, 7, 7, 7, 7, and 7 here. Having done that, I'm finished with that. I can continue scanning for uniques, but first I'm going to jump down to this 4 unique and fill it in. Place it, cross out the bar, then cross out the 4s in the box. 4, 4, 4. Cross out the 4s in the row. Here, 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 and here. And cross out the 4s in the column. I don't need to do because that column is filled. I'll put a check mark next to it to indicate that it's been finished. So, do I have any more uniques? Let me resume my scan up here. In fact, I'll start over again. I don't see any uniques in this box. I don't see any. I do see a unique here. This four is the only number available to fill this box. This must be a four. Fill it in. Cross out its possibles bar. Cross out the fours in the box of nine. That makes this five into into a unique. I will uh, come back to it later. Cross out the fours in the row. Four here and four here gets crossed out, and in the column four four four. I notice this 9 is now unique, and 4 is down here. So, I'm finished with that. I'll go to my next unique, which is this 5 here. Fill it in, cross out its bar, cross out that 5, which makes this 2 unique. I'll circle it to remind me to come back to it. Cross out the 5s in the row, 5 there, and in the column. There are no 5s to cross out. I'm done with that. I do remember I had a 9 down here that was unique. I'll fill it in, cross out its possibles bar, cross out the other 9s in the box. No uniques generated yet. Cross out the other 9s in the row. And then also in the column. Okay, Nothing more to that. I'm going to go back to scanning for uniques before I move on to the next step. Oh, wait, I have this 2 to come back to. 2 cross it out. I don't need to do anything with the box because it's already been filled. I check the row, cross out remaining twos in the row. Still no uniques there. Cross out any remaining twos in the column. There's one down there. And I'm finished with that. I don't see any uniques to act on now. I'll continue scanning. There is a unique seven here. I'll fill it in, cross out its bar, cross out the sevens in the box. I'll notice this unique as I went past it. I'll circle it so I can come back to it. The box, the row, cross out the 7 here, and the 7 here. This 4 now becomes unique. And cross out the 7s in the column. Notice that I'm sticking with the 7 until I've completely crossed out its row, column, and box, rather than chasing down this 3 or this 4 over here. This is very important to get all the information recorded for one cell before you go on to the next cell. Now I'm going to continue with this unique here, this 3. Fill it in, cross out its possibles bar, cross out 3's in the box, in the row, and in the column. That's finished. This 4 here, can place, cross out the 4, cross out its bar, cross out 4's in the box. This 2 becomes unique now, and in the row, and also in the column, this 9 becomes unique, and so does this 7. This is often the case with easy puzzles. There's a cascade or domino effect as I begin to fill in numbers. That's part of what makes them easy. Having finished with that 4, I'll move on to this 2. Okay, Cross out its possibles bar. This row is now finished. I'll put a check mark there. Uh, cross out twos in the uh, box. There are none. The row is complete. Cross out twos in the column. There are some twos down here to be taken out. I'll move on to the next unique, which was this nine here. Write in nine. Cross out the bar. Uh, cross out nines in the box. Nines there. No new uniques generated as far as I can see. Cross out nines in the row. There. And there. 
and cross out nines in the column. That nine makes this one unique, that nine makes this three unique, so I have some more to act on. So I've done the row, the column, and the box for that nine. I'll do the seven down here, cross out its bar, cross out sevens in the box, cross out sevens in the row, and in the column there are none. Going next to this one, crossing out its possibles bar, checking the buffer ones in the box, there are none, in the row there are none, and in the column we're nearly done, that's done. Filling in the three now that was unique also, crossing out threes in the box. The three in the column I don't need to do because the column is finished, and checking the row for threes, I don't see any. Okay, I'll continue scanning for threes, for uniques, I think I had gotten as far as this box, so looking for uniques here, I don't see any, don't see any, oh, no, four, seven, four, six, one, two, five, four, five, here's one, this four is unique in this box, so I'll place it, cross out the possibles bar, cross out the fours, in this box of nine, cross out the fours in the row, there's one here, and one here, then cross out the fours in the column, there's one down here. Okay, moving on now, this five is now unique, so I will place it, five, cross out the possibles bar, cross out the fives in the possible bars of other cells in the box, also in the row, and also in the column. I'm looking for more uniques. I don't see any more uniques here. Looking here, here's a four that is unique. I will place it, cross out its possibles bar, cross out the remaining fours inside this box, cross out the fours in this row, and cross out the fours in this column. Okay, don't see any other uniques here, four, five, one, two, seven, eight, nine, two, and five. Okay, if I miss any uniques at this stage, it's not that important because in the next step, step seven, I will be able to locate them. I'm going to move on to step seven now, which is to begin evaluating by boxes. I don't think we'll need all ten steps for this particular puzzle because it's so easy, but I'll try a harder puzzle later on. So step seven begins evaluating by each individual box, and we'll start at the upper left. The first thing to do is to use this, these larger numbers below the box to do some record keeping. The first thing I will do is to circle the numbers that have been placed so far. In this box, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, and 5. I'll circle those. That means we have to place these uncircled numbers. Now, the next thing I'm going to do is for each empty cell in this box, I'm going to write down the remaining numbers that could go into it. So for this one, 6 and 8. For this one, 7 and 8. For this one, 6, 8, and 9. And for this one, 7, 8, and 9. Having done that, my next step is to begin with the first uncircled big number and to look for it to appear at least twice in the remaining cell. So does 6 appear at least two times? It does. Since it does, I put a dot under it to let me know that I've checked it. Does 7 appear at least twice? It does. Does 8 appear in two different cells? It appears in all four cells, in fact. And 9 appears in two different cells. There's nothing more I can do now with these numbers. I'm going to move on to the next box. This box is actually filled. I can just circle all of these. That's done. This third box, 1, 2, 3, 4, 6, 7. So I'll circle these down here. 4, 6, 7, meaning 5, 8, and 9 remain to be filled. Now I'll write in the lower left corner, smaller, the remaining possibles for each box, 5, 8, 9, 8, 9, 8, 9. Now, for each uncircled number, beginning with the smallest, I'm going to look for it to appear in at least two different cells. And 5 does not appear in two different cells, it appears only in this cell. Since 5 appears only as a possibility in this cell, and it must occur once in this box, this must be the location of the 5. So I'm going to place the 5 here, I'm going to circle it in my record keeping bar below, I'm going to cross out its possibles bar, then I'm going to treat it just like the uniques that I placed previously. I'm going to cross out any fives that I see in the box, and there are none. I'm going to cross out any fives in the row, there are none. 
and cross out any fives that appear in the column. There is one down there, so I've taken that out. Now I'm going to go continue with this. Does 8 appear? In two boxes it does, and so does 9. I'm finished with this box. Moving on to this box. 1, 2, 3, 8, and 9. 2, 3, 8, 9, circling them. Now filling in the possibles for each box in the lower left corner. 4, 6, 4, 7, 5, 7, and 6, 7. Now going through the uncircled numbers, looking for them at least twice. Does 4 occur in two boxes? It does. Does 5 occur? in two boxes. It does not. Five only appears here, and I can see why. There's a five in this row, and a five in this row, and a five in this column. Since five only appears here, this must be the proper place for it. I write five, I circle five, I cross out its possibles bar, I cross out any fives in the box, I cross out any fives in the row, and I cross out any fives in the column. Now, now that I've placed a 5, it's important that when I'm doing this check, I go back and start over again checking the big numbers in this box in case any of the possibles that I've eliminated are going to make a difference. So I start again with 4. Does 4 appear twice? Yes, it does. does I skip 5 now because it's been placed. Does 6 appear at least twice? Yes, it does. It gets a dot. And does 7 appear at least twice? Yes, it does. Fine. I'm finished with this. Moving on to the middle box. 2, 3, 5, and 9. I circle. Then I begin writing possibles in the lower left corner. 1, 7, 1, 7, 8, 6, 7, 4, 6, 4, 7. Now beginning with 1, I look for it to occur twice. It does. Dot. 4 occurs twice. Dot. 6 occurs twice. Dot. 7 occurs twice. Dot. 8 8 occurs only once, so I'm going to circle it, place it in the box where it appears, cross out its possibles bar, cross out any 8's in the box, there are none, cross out any 8's in the possible bars of the row, and of the column there are none. Now, since I filled a number here, I'm going to go back and double check all my remaining numbers. Does 1 appear in two boxes? It does not. This is the only remaining box with a 1, so the 1 must be correct and then cross off any ones that are in the box, that are in the row. There's one. Never, never forget this step. Okay, and in the column, I'm finished with that then. I will now go to the four. Does four appear twice? It does. Six appears twice, and so does seven. I'm finished with this box now. Moving on to this box. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight are filled, leaving one, two, and nine. I'll look at my possibles. 2 looks like to be the only possible number here. So I will fill that in. This is what I meant when I said you would catch uniques if you missed any before. 2, crossing off the 2's in the box, in the row, and in the column. There are some 2's down here that need to be taken care of. This 1 I notice now is unique, so I'll circle it to come back to. I've taken care of that 2 in the box, row, and column. Let me go ahead and take care of this 1 before I come back to checking these. Filling in the 1 here, crossing off 1's in the box, makes this 2 a unique, circling that. In the row, which is almost finished, and in the column, crossing off that 1 makes this 9 unique. I'm going to circle it. Okay, I'm finished with the 1 there. Filling in the 2 here, crossing out its possibles bar, crossing out the 2 here makes this 9 unique. And that's all for the box. The row is complete, gets a check mark. And the column, crossing out this 2, makes this 5 unique. And that's it for the column. I'll go ahead and do the 9 next. Crossing out this 9, possibles bar, crossing out the 9s remaining in this box. In this row, and in this column, this 9 makes this 1 unique. And we're finished there. Doing the 5 next crossing out its possibles bar, crossing out any fives that are in the box, in the row, and in the column. I'm finished with that. The one here, cross out its possibles bar, this one, and cross out the ones in the box, cross out ones that are in the row. This column is finished, check mark. This nine, of course, that I can place, cross out its possibles bar, 
cross out the nines in the column. That eight becomes unique then. In the row, no need, and the box is done. So this entire box is finished. Going up to this eight here, cross out its possibles bar. Crossing out the eights here makes this seven unique. I'll circle it to come back to. Crossing out the eight up here makes this nine unique. I'll circle that. And crossing out the eight down here makes this four and this six both unique. So now I will turn to finishing this box, nine. This nine then, I, this box is complete. And then the row, crossing out the nines in the row. Oops, sorry, that's that eight's still intact. Crossing out the nine there. And nines here, that's done. Do I have any other uniques that I can chase down? This is a four. Crossing out the four. Cross out the fours in the box, there are none. In the row, there are none. In the column, there are none. The six here. Cross out its possibles bar. Cross out sixes in the box, in the row, and in the column. This column is finished. Next, let's see. Do I have any uniques that I circled? The seven is unique. Crossing out the seven. I cross out the sevens that are in the box. That means this nine is the unique number here. In the column and in the row. Okay, finishing with that, I'll now do this nine. Crossing out the possibles bar, cross out the nines in the column. And in the row, the row is done, check mark. Don't think I've missed any other uniques. Since I've finished with this box, I'll go down here to check this one by, by box. One, four, five, six, seven, nine. Five, six, seven, nine. Two, three, and eight are remaining. Writing the possibles in the lower left corner, three, eight. 2, 8, 3, 8. Checking on multiples. Does the 2 appear at least twice? It does not. It appears only once here, so this is the right place for it. I place the 2, cross out 2's in the box, in the row, making that 7 unique, and also in the column. Okay. Having finished with the 2, I check the 3. It occurs twice, and so does the 8. I'm done with checking this box for now. Moving on to this box. Circling the numbers that are placed, 1, 4, 5, 6, 8, 9, leaving 2, 3, and 7. Writing the possibles in the lower left corner, 2, 7. Oh, sorry, I have a 7 that's unique here. Fill that in, circle it, cross out 7s. The 2 is unique, so is this 3, so I can finish this box. Crossing out 7s in the box, in the row, makes this 8 unique. And in the column, that's done. This number then, this two, can be placed. Crossing out twos in the row and in the column, which is finished. And this three must be here. Cross out the possibles bar, circle it, we're done. And cross out threes in the row. Crossing out this three makes this eight unique. I'll come back to it and threes in the column as well. Eight here, fill it in, cross out its possibles bar, cross out the eight here, makes this three unique, circle it to come back to, cross out eights in the box, in the row, the seven is unique, and in the column, there's an eight up here to take care of, so the six is unique. That's all for right now. Going on to this three, which finishes off this box. Crossing off threes in the box, I don't need to because it's complete. In the row and in the column, not needed. I can fill in the eight here. Crossing off eights in the box, the row which is done, and the column. There are no eights to cross off. Moving to the seven. The seven completes this row and this column. I'm just about done with this puzzle now. What don't I know? I don't have a place yet for this six and this eight. Actually, this six must be unique. Crossing off sixes here means the eight must go here. And the column, 
Crossing off sixes in the column makes the seven unique. Going one at a time, here's the eight. Crossing off eights in the column and the row. Check and filling in this seven now. Crossing off sevens here makes this four unique. If the four is here, then the six must be here. If the six, I cross off the six here. This is a four. And if the four is here, then the seven is unique. Crossing off the sevens places the six here. And now I have the entire puzzle filled in. I can check it against my answer key. Checking the top row, 186, 372, 594. And I'll check the diagonal, 159, 127, 439. It looks like I've done this one correctly. So that's a quick introduction to my worksheet method, the 10-step method. We didn't even get past step 7 in this case because it was an easy puzzle. I'll try this with a, with a hard puzzle later on, but I hope you found this helpful. Thanks for watching today. Goodbye.